Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak update. So I'm going to call this a progress update rather than a news update here in this video because I'm going to be going over all of the progress that has happened over the past couple of days to the new user land exploits which recently came out. So there's a lot of simultaneous developments happening in parallel at the moment with these different exploits. So the main update in terms of progress right now is that the user land exploits are more or less done and now it's all about porting the kernel exploit, which is the laps exploit, which allows us to jailbreak up to 12.02 on the PS4, and then on the PS5 that would be 10.01. The laps kernel exploit is the one that's been ported right now. So in terms of the exploits, the one that is the furthest along is the Y2JB, the YouTube jailbreak. That is the one that is the closest at the moment. So we can see here that there has been some new developments here. So first of all, we got the release of the laps payload. So laps.js, the JavaScript file to load the kernel exploit has now been added. Now this isn't a full release and it is not ready yet for end users because it does not include the last piece of the puzzle, which is the elf loader. The elf loader is not included in this version and that is required to load payloads like the ETA hen payload and the kstuff payload. So without the elf loader, we're not going to be able to actually uh, use this for anything useful right now. All you can do is enable the debug settings with it at the moment. That is as far as it goes. But once we get a full release of version 1.2, it will have the elf loader included with the backup file that you can use to restore it on a non-jailbroken PS5. So in terms of actually getting this going, we have an updated version here which includes the initial laps implementation that needs to be installed, uh, which you can do using FTP, of course. But there's actually a new updater that has also been released for this by uh, Takatarina, so y2jb-updater. And this will actually allow you to use the YouTube jailbreak itself to update its own files to update the exploit rather than having to manually update the files with FTP or restoring a backup file. So you can use an older version with this to update to the latest version. So to do that, all you got to do is download the source code files here as a zip for the main project for YouTube jailbreak and then do the same with the updater. You can then open up the main project folder for the updater and you want to edit the y2jbupdater.js file and change the IP address at the top to your computer's IP address, not the PS5's IP address, but your computer's IP. You enter it in there and save that file. And then you simply copy the update server Python file to the root of the YouTube jailbreak projects uh, folder and then copy the JS updater payload into the payloads folder, at which point you can run the YouTube jailbreak, the current version that you have installed, let that run to completion so it's ready for a payload on port 50,000, at which point you can then right click in the main YouTube jailbreak project folder and open in terminal and then type in python space update underscore server dot py and press enter and that will start running the update server that is listening at which point you can then send the payload file, which is in the payloads folder, y2jbupdate.js. I'm using Netcat GUI to send the payload, but you can use the normal payload sender Python file that's included in the YouTube jailbreak project. But I just find it easier to use Netcat GUI. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the payload inside for the updater and then enter the PS5's IP address and then the port number of 50,000. And then when I inject this payload, you will see that the YouTube jailbreak grabs all of the files from the computer updating to all of the latest files and then we can see back on the ps5 here it says it has completed and successfully updated the youtube jailbreak with the latest version so it uploads from the source files that are on your computer to the internal storage so when you relaunch the youtube jailbreak it will then run the updated version as you can see here so that's it now running so the next thing we can do is try and load the laps kernel exploit so if I just send the laps.js file now that we've updated to the latest version that should support it, we should be able to just drag in the laps.js file and send that as a payload over to the PS5 and that will run the kernel exploit to jailbreak the PS5. So as you can see this time it was successful. So I can go ahead and now close out of the YouTube application once we have the laps kernel exploit running. And if I head over to the settings menu, you can see the debug settings are now enabled. So we have successfully essentially jailbroken our PS5 using this. But again, it's not a full release yet because we don't have that one missing piece of the puzzle, which is the elf loader that is needed to run the payloads. Once we have that, we'll be able to fully jailbreak the PS5 using this. But that's as far as we're up to right now at the time I'm recording this video. So the updater, very, very useful for updating to the latest version 
of that exploit. Next up, we have the Netflix and Hack project, which now has an official release for the PS5 here. As you can see, we now have a release here, and it's from Earth Onion, Cow AR, or Co AR, and UFM42. So those are the developers behind this project here. And the LAPS implementation that's been worked on here, I believe, is basically a port of the one that uh, Gejinet is working on for the YouTube jailbreak. Um, so that is also ongoing with this particular exploit as well. But as you can see here, it now adds a couple of main changes. Uh, one of the main changes is that you no longer need to set up the proxy locally on your computer that actually runs the exploit with this man in the middle attack. Instead, there is a public server set up that will do the injection of the exploit for you. So you can just point your PS5 to that server and you don't have to set anything up locally, which makes it a lot easier to use. The other benefit of this particular exploit is that there's also a way to set this up on non-jailbroken consoles without having to restore a backup file. Now you can still restore a backup file, that is the easiest option, where you just format a USB drive as XFAT format or FAT32, and then unzip the system backup folder, this zip file here, into the root of that USB drive, and then you can plug that into your PS5 and use the backup and restore option to restore that backup file onto the PS5, and that'll get the correct version of Netflix installed so it's ready to load the jailbreak. However, restoring a backup file, of course, does also, you know, reset your console and you lose your current stuff that's on your console, like installed applications and save files and settings. So to avoid that, another option that has been devised here is that you can actually use an M.2 drive to get the correct version of Netflix installed without having to restore a backup file. Now, it's also not the most convenient thing to do either, but what you can do is that if you have an NVMe drive on your PS5 or one that you can use in your PS5 temporarily, then all you need to do is connect that NVMe drive up to your computer, either by using an NVMe to USB enclosure uh, to get the drive connected or just connect it directly to the, an NVMe port in your motherboard on your PC. Then you can download one of these Netflix zip files. There's a 256 one for 256 gigabyte SSDs and one for two terabyte SSDs. But if you have an NVMe drive that corresponds to these sizes, then you can download the zip file for your NVMe drive and then simply extract the image file to your computer. Then you download the copy software, HDD raw copy. And then for the source image, you wanna select file and double click it and then browse for that file that you downloaded, the image file, select it and then click next. And then for the target drive, you're gonna select your NVMe drive in my case, it's the one here that I have connected via USB. Then I'm gonna select that and allow it to start the process. Now be warned, it will wipe your SSD. So whatever was on the SSD previously will be erased, but it will go ahead and restore that image to your SSD. Once it's restored, you can then plug that SSD back into the M.2 slot on your PS5 and screw it in. Once that's connected, you can then boot up your PS5 and that version of Netflix should be available on the M.2 drive. Now I'd highly recommend you quickly copy it from the M.2 drive by going into your storage settings, going into the M.2 section, finding the Netflix application on the SSD and move it or copy it to the internal storage. And then you'll have the correct version of Netflix installed without having to restore a backup file, uh, which of course will wipe your PS5. So that's an alternative option without having to restore a backup. It's not super convenient right now because not all SSD sizes are supported, but once they are, this would be a great option if you have an NVMe drive on your PS5 and you don't want to end up losing your save files by restoring a backup. Of course, if you're not restoring the backup, you'll also have to set up your network settings by editing your network and then changing the proxy settings to tell it to use a proxy. And then for the proxy IP address, you can just enter 172.105.156.37 and then the port number as 42069. If you enter that and then click OK and get that connected, then all you have to do is run the Netflix application and that should trigger the exploit. So after a few seconds there, Netflix runs, we get the green text, which is the exploit running, and then we get Hello Netflix popping up here and we are up and running. There is also a test payload that has been added as well in the payload section. You can download the source code as a zip file and then go to the payload section and I can take that payload, drag it in to Netcat GUI or some other payload injector, enter the port number that appears in the exploit, which changes every time you launch it. 
So just enter whatever the port number is when you launch the application and then the IP address of your PS5 in the host box. And if we inject that payload, we can see the payload is loaded on the console. So yeah, we do have this user land exploit now fully set up in a state where I think it is more or less ready for end users. But it doesn't stop there because we also have some improvements to the other exploits. So we have from Hello Yunho, we have the YARP exploit as well, which has also been updated. So we have a new version of this, the new save file that you can install. And it also comes with a handy updater as well so that you can update uh, the save file for the exploit if you already have a previous version installed, which is very handy. Now I've already covered in my previous news update how to actually get this particular exploit installed because it's a save game exploit where you have to replace the save file for the game in order for this to work. And this of course uses the game A Year of Springs PS4 or Arcade Spirits, the new Challengers PS4. So this one actually has the easiest updater to use because all you got to do is once you have the modified save file installed, you run the game, you then go to load the save file on the PS4, you go to load that save and that will run the exploit there. And it's listening on your PS4's IP address on port 9025. At which point, again, you can download the latest code here as a zip file and then simply extract that to your computer, go into the folder, go into the payloads folder, and you will now see the updater.python file there. You can just copy that into your payload injector like Netcat GUI, enter the IP address of your PS4 in the host box, port number is 9025, and then send it. And it will then ask you to send the save file again on the same port on 9025. So all you got to do then is simply download the latest save file for the project here. So the 1-1-lt1.save from the latest releases. You download that save file here and then you just drag that into Netcat GUI and send that the same way that you did with the updater payload itself. And it will then upload that save file and install it for you. And that's you now updated to the latest version. So you then just press X on the controller, which will crash the game, but that is intentional. And then once the game fully crashes and closes, you can then reopen it again and load the save file. And it will then load the updated version that was updated using this new updater. And that's how you get the exploit updated without having to go through the annoying process of, you know, having to decrypt the save file again and swapping it out manually on your computer and then re-uploading it again with the Apollo save tool or with a Discord save bot. This makes it much quicker, much more convenient for updating to the latest version of the exploit. So that's available there. And yes, there is also, as you notice, a lapse payload as well that you can send. But again, it is not fully working at the moment. But you can see the progress here because all three of these user land exploits are now at the stage of trying to implement the kernel exploit in order to use these as an entry point to jailbreak the PS4 and PS5. So yeah, things are improving at a rapid pace here. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Just a quick update on the general improvements that are being made to the exploit here. The YouTube jailbreak is getting very, very close, um, but it's still not quite there yet until we have the elf loader, but that could happen at any moment. So as soon as that's available, we're pretty much off to the races for jailbreaking the PS5. If you have a digital edition console or a console without a functioning disk drive, you'll be able to jailbreak it real soon once we're able to load payloads. That is the final step. And then on top of that, we have all of these other user land exploits that are also now trying to implement the kernel exploit and they also have updaters to allow you to easily update the exploit to the latest version so that is now available so anyway that's just a quick update there so hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and once again i'll hopefully see you guys in the next one